This is the Football Podcast with your hosts, Tyler, Andy, and Boyer. Welcome back to Fantasy Football Podcast presented by your performance enhancing dads. What's happening, fellas? I'm awake. <laughs> Me too. Oh, Boyer. This is good. Uh, we, we delayed a day cause of, cause of sleepiness and, and whatever. So here we are, we're all awake. We're ready to go. Uh, Andy, you want to do me a favor and jump into, uh, last week's predictions for us. How'd we do? Do we do any better last week than we did, uh, the previous handful? A, a touch, a touch better. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Boyer picked Paul to beat me. Didn't happen. Suck it, Boyer. Uh, so one for Ty and I there. Uh, Ty picked Jeremy to beat Fryer. Jeremy did not want to win last week. He tried really it was, not to. It was close for there for a little while until Devante had that long touchdown at the very end of the game. I mean, Boyer and I, as people in Fryer's division, just a giant middle finger to Jeremy letting Fryer get a win with the second fewest points in the league last week. Not real thrilled, but uh, at least Boyer lost to walker with the second most points so that kind of balances it out um none of us picked walker um we all did pick ty we all did pick oh i'm sorry third most points i forgot your team went fucking bananas on monday (laughs) night ty uh but we all picked ty to win we all picked duo to win that happened boyer was the only one to pick colin to beat robbie um so yeah boyer got four i got four ty got three Yes. which is pretty much par for the course at this point um so season standings boyer and i both tied with 16 correct ty sitting at 12 falling behind bud i don't know what to tell you i'm just i'm not i'm not good at this you know i am okay at fantasy football i am okay at lineup decisions I'm okay. No, I'm, I'm definitely not okay at predicting uh, matchups. So, clearly, mediocre at best for anything. So, um, I was stoked by that Monday night game, though. I mean, 27 yards out of Kelsey's got to be a little disappointing, right? Yeah, yeah. It was it was a little bit low on the yardage, but you know. He'll he'll bounce back next week. Yeah, you got to look for him to get some some more some better looks. Yeah, for eight, sure. Eight eight catches for twenty seven yards. It's only like three or four yards a catch. You got to get those numbers up. Yeah, we'll 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 put in a request to Andy Reid. We're going to get this situated for next week. Those are rookie numbers. He's got to pump those numbers up. Yeah, yeah. So, all right, uh, we're going to jump into some true false here. Uh, let's see what Andy pulled this week. Andy, don't disappoint me. Uh, I got six. We can spend as much time talking about them as you want. But uh, Aaron Rodgers has fewer points. Then Marcus Mariota, true or false? Through five games, they both played five games. I'm gonna go with false. Mm, nope, I'm gonna go with true. I I'm gonna I'm gonna go with true because otherwise you wouldn't be asking me. But it's got to be got to close points. So you're both going true. Mariota has more points than two back to back MVP Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Wow. Mostly because the Falcons have been in a couple shootouts. They've had a couple games where they've had a bunch of points. And the Drake, Drake London have... did have a couple solid games, and it's going to be within a probably two or three points. So it's it's not a large margin. It's just one of those like stupid. He's beaten them by point six points or something stupid. I mean, I picked them because they were next to each other in the list, regardless <laughs> of what the answer is. That's why they're on here next to each right. other, right? So Mariota is a point and a half ahead of Rodgers right now through five weeks, yeah. but neither of you pegged oh. the reason why. Um, he's got 156 rushing yards, two rushing touchdowns, and two two-point conversions. Uh, if all of those numbers for Aaron Rodgers looks like nine rushing yards. Um, so that's wow. the difference. Yeah, Rodgers that has was... 230 more passing yards, four more passing touchdowns, one fewer interception one fewer fumble lost. So all of your quarterback numbers, Rodgers is better. We all know Rodgers is better than Mariota, but 156 <laughs> and two on the ground will catch you up pretty quick. Yep, for sure. All right. Geno Smith 
Is QB5 true or false? Mm, false. Uh, I'm going to go with false. I think he's higher. All right. Name, name the guys ahead of him, I guess, if you don't think he's QB5, or if you do think he's QB5. Who's ahead of him? Allen is top. Lamar Jackson is two. Mahomes and Jalen Hurts are both ahead of him. Um, give me another name that's better than Geno Smith. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is, there's been because like Kyler Murray's done okay in a couple games. I don't know if he's ahead of them. Justin Herbert struggled this year. Joe Burrow struggled this year. Uh, uh Kyler Murray because of the rushing upside. And that puts Geno Smith at like six, seven, or eight with Herbert, Geno Smith, and Joe Burrow slash Tom Brady slash that range. Uh, Where do you get? I you mean, get I I I said he was higher than fifth. I like he was third or fourth. So I'd put like Allen Jackson as number one and two, and then. Hurts I don't Mahomes. Know if Mahomes is quite three, but th- Mahomes has had some good games now. So I'll put Mahomes at three and then Gino at four. Yeah. So Hurts has to be above him. Yeah. Allen, Allen is one. Jackson is two. Jalen Hurts is three. Patrick Mahomes is four. And then there's a 25 point drop after those guys. So right. Ty, you pegged it perfectly. The next four guys oh. in order, Ty also pegged. Kyler Murray is number five. Gino Smith is number six. Joe Burrow is number seven. Justin Herbert is number eight. And then Ty, you probably should have quit talking because Tom Brady was 13. So he's not up there. <sighs> Dang uh, it. <laughs> um, but yeah, Gino has uh, 97.9 points. He is one point behind Kyler Murray. Dang. Isn't that nuts? So he's QB6. That was false. You guys both got that one right. Uh, just real quick to go back to the first true or false. Uh, the reason I picked um, Mariota. Uh, ahead of Rodgers is technically correct. The uh, Atlanta right now has 23.6 points per game and the Packers are at 19.4. So I am right for my reason. I just want to just want to throw that out there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Baker Mayfield has more <laughs> fantasy points than Matthew Stafford. False. Fact that they're being put in this though is concerning for Matthew Stafford. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna say false as well. I think Baker's probably like right behind him. This one I have no idea on because they've both been bad. Stafford oh. has 360. 260. I can't math real quick. 260. No, 360 more passing yards. But he has 10 turnovers. Baker's Ooh. only got five. <laughs> that wipes out 100 yards. Here's the important stat before I tell you the answer. Both of these guys are on page two of quarterback points. Baker's 26th. Stafford's 27th. Ooh. Which is embarrassing. Yeah, At, right. at least for Stafford. Baker, that's where he belongs. They're both <laughs> averaging under 11 points a week. You know wow. why? Because Baker doesn't just dump the ball off to McCaffrey for 300 yards a game like he should. He should. He should. I mean, <laughs> he should throw it to DJ Moore, and he should just be a better quarterback. <laughs> Sounds like an easy fix. You guys should go to Carolina and uh, be consultants for the offense or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Moving off of quarterbacks. Question four. True Thank or false goodness. four. Hollywood Brown is a top 10 wide receiver. True or false? He's been getting a lot of volume without Hop. For sure. Uh, for sure. He's he's put up 13, 12 to 15 like four straight weeks. So I'm going to say yeah. yes. Yeah, I'll go true on that. He's 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 been really good the last couple of weeks. The first week he wasn't great, but after that he's been fine. And by fine, I mean good because he's been top 10. Sorry, my bad. Fine is not a good word that I should use. All right, uh, let's revise the question. Hollywood is a top 
seven wide receiver, true or false? Mm. False. I don't think he's quite top seven. He's probably at seven, and it's a trick question. <laughs> so if he's at if seven, he's at so that would seven, technically it be top make seven. it a trick question. Because he's top seven. seven. So yes, I'm going to say he's at seven, because that's why you're asking this question. He is wide receiver seven. Uh, he's uh, less than half a point behind Jalen Waddle. He's ahead of Debo, Christian Kirk, Amon Ross St. Brown. Granted, Amon Ross sat last week, last week, two weeks ago, whatever it was. He missed a game. Yeah. Um, he's a- ahead of Mike Williams, Chris Olave, AJ Brown, Mike Evans. Um, so some good names he's he's ahead of. Yeah. Well, and it's going the wrong way for him, but Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle are both ahead, right? You said Jalen Waddle's just ahead of Marquise Brown. Isn't how isn't Hill above Waddle? Yeah, so Cooper Cup, Stefan Diggs, Justin Jefferson, Devontae Adams, Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle. And then Hollywood, which then that's Debo. hard because because with that quarterback situation now, both of them could fall real yeah. quick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in the game last week, uh, Tyreek had six points and Waddle had two point three. So that mm-hmm. was what they did with the third string quarterback in one game. Not right. great. Not what you want. Not great is correct. They need to start wearing the uh, the poofy helmets in game for their quarterbacks to help protect their guys. All right, moving on. Taysom Hill has more points per game than Mark Andrews. Uh, So points per game, he didn't play in one, and he's tight end four. So the question is, is does that that one game, does that give him the average on a points per game basis to bump up over Andrews? Um, I'm going to say no. I'm going to say yes, because everything Boyer said was leading me to him saying <laughs> yes, and then he said no. <laughs> All right. So Taysom Hill is currently tight end three oh, on the year, man. not tight end from three. One game. Really just from one game. Really, just one game. Yeah, from one game. <laughs> Mark Andrews averages. 11.8 points per week. He Taysom also had Hill. one really big week, though. He did. Uh, Taysom Hill, in one fewer game, as Boyer called out, averages 14 and a half. Mm. He is, is much closer to Travis Kelsey than he is to Mark Andrews there at tight end two in points per game. So, so true, false. Taysom Hill ends on a points per game basis ahead of Mark Andrews. Very false. Very, oh. very false. We all know it's false. <laughs> but it, it's just fun to point out that one 34-point well, <laughs> game. Honestly. The, the uh, only way the only way Taysom Hill goes above Mark Andrews the rest of the year is if he legit becomes change of pace with Alvin Kamara and gets 15 touches a game because – they should give him the ball more. All right, let's think. let's do it this way. Taysom Hill is currently QB twenty two ahead of Matt Ryan, Justin Fields, and the aforementioned Mayfield and Stafford combo. That's, sure. that's bad, guys. That's impressive. Get your <laughs> shit together. It's impressive right. for a tight end to be that high on the quarterback rankings. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last one. Derrick Henry has over. 100 yards receiving like total for the year five games for his career (laughs) (laughs) Uh, i'm gonna go under i'm gonna go over because he's been getting work so why not i have no reasoning other than sure so in derrick henry's amazing 2020 season where he had 2,000 yards rushing. He had 114 receiving yards through in 16 games. Uh, this year, through five games, he has 121. Well, so, good for him. Yeah. Breaking all sorts of records down there. Yeah, he's mm-hmm. uh, he's doing pretty good. I mean, I mean you're fair without AJ Brown. Two catches a game. <laughs> they've only got so many guys to throw to. So. Traylon Burks is out. Whoops. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all right, oh. that's all I got. 
All right. Well, you know what we're going to do now, right? This is our favorite segment. Pow! What you licking? Drinking. <laughs> you, were making, you were making weird motions. I wasn't sure what I was supposed to say. Well, it's October. So this is uh, Samuel Adams' Oktoberfest. That's nice. Boyer, you just chilling? Are you... I've been, I've been sleepy, so I am drinking an ale, but it is a, a ginger ale. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I went back to my old sponsors in Coors Light. Um, is that why the checks stopped? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I haven't, I haven't, you know, given them some love lately, so maybe the checks will roll back in. My internet will get better. We'll see what happens. Ty, that... How come they let you in the house now? What did, uh, what did you have to give up to get that? If you listen to the podcast, I'm a little bit quieter. You know, I'm I'm trying this like inside voice thing. I I'm not. And you know, views I didn't know you went had one up. of those. <laughs> what, what's that? And views went up. And views went up. <laughs> Apparently, being able to have stable internet makes a difference. I don't know. I think it's more that you're not screaming at people anymore. No, no, no. They like when I scream at them. Sure. Pe- people like that. They're into it. Some people. <laughs> All right. Andy. What's up? I need you to start, since I don't talk to Boyer. Um, you know, uh, start start off on uh, some lineup decisions, predictions, slash just tell me I'm going to win. Okay. Start us off with me versus uh, Char. I'm going to start with Charlie. Charlie's got some bye week issues, uh, mainly because he's still rostering four quarterbacks, two of which are hurt or suspended. I don't know what the fuck he's doing, guys. Deshaun Watson doesn't play. Dak Prescott doesn't play. He's got golf on a bye. This is valuable bench space, Charlie, for your shit team. Um, he's got quarterback number 27 on the list here. It's fine. He does. Matt Stafford, 11 points per game. Good luck with that. Um, so lineup decisions. Uh, Cam Akers over Dylan or Stevenson, you're not doing. And then DJ Moore, you're also not playing unless Scott wins out. So I don't see any lineup decisions on Charlie's team this week. Um, on Ty's side, Everett or Kelsey, guys, what do we think? Um, <laughs> Good thing I, I think Everett, Everett might get more yards. <laughs> yeah, right. That, that's not true. Said he might. Everett had one catch for two yards last week. <laughs> so Kansas City's been not super great against running backs. So my guess is Ty's gonna leave Singletary in. Um I, I could be wrong. Ty'll tell me if I'm wrong, but um the main guy on his bench that would maybe be coming in is Michael Thomas over T. Higgins, but both of those guys are questionable. Um you're probably leaving Pittman in. So I don't really see anything that I'm changing unless Higgins is out and then you're putting Thomas in, but Ty's got a lot of pieces. Or do you see anything here that, that you would tweak or are you going to leave it? I think I'd probably just leave it. Yeah. Uh, Ty put Eckler in your flex cause he plays Monday. But aside from that, <laughs> uh, what uh, you making any changes or you, you like it, how it is? No, I mean I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it as is at this point. Mostly I Singletary makes me nervous. I, I have been full disclosure, been trying to figure out how to buy a running back because Singletary makes me nervous. I why the Bills don't use him more, I don't know. Other than Josh Allen's good and Stefan Diggs is good and all that crap. I get it. I, I think you just said it. <laughs> right. But why would you not utilize a run game a little bit? You yeah, win 30. 30- I mean- you win 38 to three and this guy touches the ball six times on the ground for 42 yards. They're not going to score 38 points by running the ball with Singletary. His three worst games were all the, the blowouts, you know, the two that have been close, the loss to Miami and then the comeback against Baltimore were his two best games. Right. So. He hasn't cracked 50 yards rushing though all year. No, but he is the primary running back. Granted, right. they are spreading it around quite a bit, and Josh Allen steals some, so that only means so much. But on Ty's stacked ass team, if Devin Singletary is your is competing against everybody else's tight end for worst player in the starting lineup, Ty's fine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nobody I, feels no. bad for you. 
I'm not worried about it. I'm just letting you know that I'm, I've been reaching out about running backs because I, I would like to have that situation figured out if Singletary isn't getting more work. Fair. Uh, Ty, Ty uh, Singletary is actually the running back two on that team. Josh Allen has more rushing yards. Doesn't surprise me. He's got more passing yards, too. Hey, that is surprising right there. <laughs> um, All right. I got Ty this week. <clears throat> I am Let's glad not I, keep I'm, talking about Singletary. No, no, no. I'm glad we have a bye this. I am glad I have a bye this week to get some of my guys healthy. Uh, <laughs> this, is, this is good. <laughs> yeah, I got Ty. All right, cool. Uh, I'm going to jump down to Jeremy versus Robbie here. Um, Jeremy has some running back decisions, I guess. Um, he just traded for Raheem Mostert. Do we want to talk about that real quick since we're here? With, oh, yeah. I've, we, uh, with we with Robbie trade. versus Jeremy? Yeah, we may as well. Good, good spot for it. So – uh, trade just went down today. Robbie gives Jeremy Raheem Mostert. Jeremy gives Robbie Amari Cooper and two draft dollars in 2023. Uh, what do you guys think about that? So I assume that this is in tandem with whatever Jeremy's going to do with Mark Andrews. My guess is that He's leaning toward a offer with a wide receiver and therefore felt like Cooper was expendable and flipping him for most hurt made sense. That said, I don't understand why Jeremy had to give $2 with Amari Cooper to get most hurt. Like Amari Cooper has, I think, more fantasy points than, yeah, for sure more fantasy points than Raheem Mostert. Amari Cooper's got three games over 13 points. Raheem Mostert only had last week, and last week he had 18 points, but after that he had a couple of eight-point weeks. So, like, these guys are relatively similar. Mostert's knee is tweaked. I'm not concerned about it, but he has had knee issues in the past. Yep. And Amari Cooper gets Deshaun Watson back at some point this season, so... In terms of value from here to the end of the season, just in a vacuum, I'd rather have Cooper than Mostert if they were both flex players. If Jeremy wanted to add a running back, fine. Robbie desperately needed a receiver, so I don't feel like he was in a position to demand money. But, you know, two bucks is two bucks. Jeremy's going to, Jeremy made money selling me Mixon. He's going to make money selling me, uh, Mark Andrews. So does it matter? No, but I don't feel like he needed the kicker in there. I feel like. The two bucks was unnecessary. Yeah. I with with Jeremy pretty much out of the running for playoffs in my mind, maybe pushing consolation if he can get lucky somehow, some way. Um but I I don't know. The 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 move didn't it made sense for Robbie. For sure. Um, especially since Robbie had five running backs as it was, he needed a wide receiver. I get trading for Mostert, hoping that he gets the 19 to one carry total that he got last week. He becomes a bell cow, whatever he did it in, in San Francisco, but giving up Cooper plus money did seem a little high. Like you were saying, I, I feel like straight up would have been fine or moving Cooper to a wide receiver needy team possibly could have even gotten a dollar or two back since Robbie had five running backs. Something else worth mentioning is Amari Cooper was drafted for $9. If the Browns offense looks good, these last four games of the season or whatever that Watson's in, that's killer keeper value for the number one receiver on a team that has a good quarterback in theory. So something to keep an eye on. It's not like Mostert's got a ton of keeper value at 31. He's the RB1 on the team, but that only means so much. I imagine they're going to want to keep bringing 12 more guys in next offseason. Yeah, well, and and so Jeremy has Sanders, Mostert, CEH, and Edmonds. Edmonds. Right. Is the handcuff at this point. Yeah, so he's, I mean, really, he's got Sanders, Mo, Stan, Sanders, Mostert, and CEH. So he filled in bi-week situations here yeah. because 
Edmonds is the backup now. So, or third string or wherever they're going to put him. But, so, I mean, he, he got his third running back. He's able to fill bye weeks. So, I mean, it definitely doesn't hurt Jeremy per se, but it is what it is. It it, it filled a quote unquote need for both teams. Jeremy just needs Amon Ra to come back healthy so he can uh, help fill that wide receiver bye week situation. Right. All right, so let's talk. Let's, uh, Boyer, you want to jump in anything else on this one? Or All right, cool. you guys covered it. All right, cool. So now let's talk some lineup decisions here. Um, Isaiah McKenzie with Buffalo against uh, Kansas City, or do you start Romeo Dobbs? He didn't do a whole lot last week. Um, he's put up 73 in a touchdown, 47 in a touchdown, then went for 29 last week against New York Giants. Um, that game was sloppy as it was. Um, but are you guys putting McKenzie in as the uh, number three wide out uh, with the Bills over whatever Romeo Dobbs might be? Are you starting Clyde Edwards Hilaire against Buffalo? I don't think I can put CEH in against Buffalo. I think most weeks you you want him in your lineup and you know that's easy enough, but I think right. this he's, week I would lean toward McKenzie. He, yeah, he's got Buffalo and then San Fran the next this week and next week. So yeah, that's, that's tough. That's probably part of why Jeremy traded for Mostert cuz there are two weeks here that CEH may be worthless. So you're leading McKenzie, uh Boyer, what would you do here? I don't know. Um, I'd probably go with McKenzie because I think he's probably got the best uh, chance of getting, like, sneaking in two touchdowns. Hopefully it'll be a a shootout against KC. And looking at the rosters, I think Jeremy's going to need the points. So I think a go big or go home, and McKenzie's your better option for, you know, high-scoring game and touchdowns on on top of that. Yep. All right. I I would agree mostly for that situation. You gotta go, you gotta go big to get this win. So let's see. Um really on Robbie's side. Are you starting uh Kenneth Walker at Arizona versus over Najee Harris at this point against Tampa Bay? Or you just leave Najee Harris in and hope for the best? Because he's got four net against Pittsburgh, which is fine. And Saquon against Baltimore, you know, both of those aren't great matchups, but they're going to be – you're not sitting either of those running backs. So are you I, saying I think, Najee, versus I think, or Najee versus Tampa or Kenneth Walker against Arizona, which just bled out last week? Yeah, Tampa has a really good rush defense, and I think that that Liz Frank injury that Najee had in the preseason and everything has been affecting him. So I'm fine switching out uh, Kenneth Walker – for Najee here um because I think it's that they'll the Pittsburgh will probably be behind Warren will probably get those looks uh later in the game um and that Kenneth Walker's due for the volume so uh I'm I'm okay with Walker in place of Harris for this game just to see how that shakes out all right so I just want to clarify that we're gonna we're gonna be worried about Najee's Liz Frank injury when he never missed any time but Kenneth Walker has maxed out at eight carries in the game that so far this year and missed the whole preseason because he literally had to have back surgery and we're okay with that. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying is if you look at Harris, he doesn't have any kind of the burst that he had last year. And I think it's personally because the list Frank injury is still just kind of lingering. Obviously he's not missing time because of it, but he's definitely missing the burst that he normally has. His offensive line isn't good. It's not helping him any. And he doesn't have, his vision is starting to show that maybe that was just on like an average level of vision coming out of college. But I think personally he's lost some burst from last year. And I think that that's probably due to injury. I don't think that that's something we'll see on a normal basis, but against Tampa Bay's rush defense, you can't, you can't just slam into that defensive line and hope for something good to happen. Meanwhile, Kenneth Walker's due for a lot of volume here. Um, and Arizona's defense isn't nearly as good against the run, so I'm okay with with Walker going in. I would have liked to have seen Walker play a full game sure. as a starter first, but I think because of the situation and the matchups, I'm okay with Walker in over Harris. 
Yeah, I am going to leave Najee in. His yards after contact numbers are fine. Um, his like check down percent uh, and, and receptions per game and all of that are, are way less because Big Ben noodle arm has, isn't dumping off to him 12 times a game. Um, so that's that's a big dip. But he wasn't an efficient runner last year. Um, and we're still seeing him get the volume. I think that Najee is fine. And I I have some concerns about Kenneth Walker, um, not just his back, but I think that we're going to see a lot more of Debbie Does Dallas and uh, Homer, 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 Homer. What, what's that guy's name? Corrales? Homer's still injured. He's not going to play this game. So it Not should be just that. DJ Dallas essentially backing him up and then whoever they find off the street or off a practice squad for their oh, third Tony Jones. Back. Tony Jones Jr. is their technical number three right now. That okay. Guy. See, Ty's good at this. Um, I, I do <laughs> think that, that Debbie eats into uh, Walker's uh, workload a bit, but uh, if I'm going to bench Najee, it's because of the Tampa matchup, not because of any issues with how he's been playing I think that what I'm seeing is fine. It's it's not exciting, but I think that the offense is going to get moving a little bit better with Pickens. So I'm I'm okay with Najee this week. I'm um, I'm starting Kenneth Walker. I'm with Boyer mostly because of the matchup against Tampa Bay, though. Um, and I think Walker is going to get 12 to 15 carries. Najee gets 15 carries. And that Seattle offense is a whole well, Gino, baby. better than we expected. So I, I'm going to go with the offense that's been moving the ball and scoring points and and being halfway decent. So I'm going to go with Seattle and, and bank on Kenneth Walker getting 12 to 15 touches this week. Fair enough. So, all right, so who's going to win this matchup? It's going to be Robbie. Robbie. Yeah, I'm going with Robbie as well. I mean, it looks close right now, but Jeremy's selling – Mark Andrews, and that's going to – can't imagine that's going to make his team better. To be fair, he hasn't sold them yet, so. It's only Wednesday, Thursday when you guys see it, so maybe by that time he'll have sold him. Do we want to break down that deal preemptively? Jeremy, you got a haul, good work. <laughs> I really like player A. Player B has some upside – and you know if, <laughs> if he cashes in, then there's keeper value there. So I like what you did there. The cash and or keeper spot was great <laughs> for where you're at with your team. Great work. Now we can skip that next week. Good work, guys. All right. With, if anything, with we can just clip that work. and throw it into next week's episode. <laughs> with with that, can we uh, jump into the duo versus Boyer for me, Andy? Sure. Uh, the duo versus Boyer. It's a matchup that'll be played this week. Boyer gets a pretty sweet break here against the duo with Derrick Henry on a bye. Patterson on the IR. And the duo has no lineup decisions this week. Also, <laughs> Naeem Hines, Keenan Allen, and Tyler Higby are all questionable. So that's a good start. Duo really needs to get Mark Andrews. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Boyer, on the other hand has some tough lineup decisions in which shitty tight end he wants to start. Uh, Dawson Knox or Robert Tunyon. You're probably keeping Tunyon in there, but uh, really, I don't see I don't really see any choices on either side. Ty, you see anything here? I'm keeping no. ETN in over Tyler Boyd in the flex. Yeah, and and with, with uh, Damian Pierce on a bye, it... Yeah. It it opens up to set your lineup pretty nicely. Um, nope, you're you're good. You're not starting Boone at this point. Not starting Murray at this point. So you hold both of them till one of them outshows Gordon, and you'll be all right with another running back. Yeah, can I uh, can I start Taysom Hill at tight ends? Is that is that an option? <laughs> if you hadn't dropped him last week and let Walker pick him up and beat yep. you over the head with him, then yes, you could. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I picked Taysom Hill to start last week for you when we all picked a different tight end then you went and cut him and i can't help you at that point yeah. <laughs> andy right. did say andy did say don't don't get rid of that guy but it's fine uh all right so who's gonna win this matchup boyer 
Uh, I think it's going to be me. Yeah. Okay. Even if the duo manages to get Mark Andrews, I don't think that's enough to beat Boyer this week. I'm not even sure Keenan Allen's going to get a whole game, man. Yeah. So you're short Keenan Allen. You got Nyhan Hines as your starting running back. Yeah. All right. Boyer wins. Let's move on. All right. That turns to Andy versus Fryer. Division matchup, baby. Fryer is surprisingly three and two, thanks to Jeremy last week. Uh, Andy would really like to thank you for that. Already did. Yeah, yeah, you did. I just was reiterating it. Um, Breyer has players on his bench um, that I'm not – well, so, all right. So, James Conner is questionable. I think he might miss this week. So, at that point, you don't really have a question. Though. You're putting Rashad White in. Uh, I guess you could move, you move Hunt up and ball. put Judy move, in. Right. That's probably what so, I do. Yeah. So I was gonna say at that point, what do you what do you do? Do you Judy's gotta be over Rashad White? Because that's probably your only choices. Yeah. Well, if yeah. if Russell Wilson doesn't play, is Judy still above? Yeah. Honestly, it might not hurt. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. At this point, it might not. <laughs> um if Connor's out, you're moving Hunt up and I'm playing Judy. I th- yeah, I think you have to play Judy. I, I would like to say play Rashad White, but that I think that's getting cute right now. Unless Tampa Bay just absolutely slaughters Pittsburgh and then Rashad White gets work. But I think he's only in for five to seven touches still, and it's not super efficient and super valuable touches. So I think you have to go Judy with the upside. Boyer, yeah. agree? Yeah, Judy. All right, cool. Um, put Andy Schultz or Conklin at tight end. Neither. <laughs> Maybe Fryer gets Mark Andrews. <laughs> I don't know if he's in on the bidding or not, but uh, I think he you needs have to... him. Yeah, I think I think you play Conklin. I mean Schultz. Do we even know if he's going to play? We well, don't. He still Schultz has a issues. grand total of two catches for eighteen yards since uh, Dak went down. <laughs> Yeah, which I think is bad. But happy. uh on the on that vein, all of what Conklin did was when Flacco was quarterback, he's only got he's got three catches for fifty two yards uh in that first game, but he had one target last week in a game and they ran a lot that game, but he had one target last week. Uh so there's definitely been a bit of a change. Uh he was averaging eight targets and six catches a game with Flacco in at quarterback and that's gone away. Yeah. I, I still think you got to leave Conklin in though. Cause there's more, I don't want to say more of an upside because the Jets upside isn't any more than Dallas, but Dalton Schultz, I'm not starting him. I can't. He also played 10 snaps and re-injured the same injury that he had. So I'm, I'm not going to count on him to start. And even if he does, what is he going to look like? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with Conklin. Fair. I think the injury answers that question. I agree with you guys, but neither of these guys is in love with their quarterback right now, which is not what you want. Right. right. Um, now move to me, Ty. Yeah, yeah. That's where I was going, and you got talking. Oh, I wanted to talk about Friars tight ends. They're both bad. It's like <laughs> Boyer. Um. So I guess – you could say a lineup decision, Eno you know, Benjamin, assuming James Conner is out, over McLaurin or Alan Lazard. Yep. Which, which to be honest, McLaurin and Alan Lazard in itself is a is a tough decision at this point because McLaurin has not been doing what you expected him to do. Yeah, I'll let Boyer comment on what he thinks, and then I'll tell you where I'm at. Hmm. I think you said McLaurin. Well, no, because they freaking play Chicago. You have to play. Yeah, and they that's, play that's Thursday. The that's the problem. Is I'm not going to know if yeah. Eno's starting until Terry's already played. Which means you put him in your wide receiver slot over Lazard, and then you can make that decision between Lazard and Eno. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. yeah. then, uh, if everyone played at noon, I would play Eno over Terry. But that's not how it works this week. You like you like 
Lazard at New York over you know. I Seattle, think I do. Seattle bleeds points, so man. Yeah. They they've and given they up have running back. no running backs. Like it is all Eno all day. Right. Yeah. I don't know. I'd really like to play Lazard over Terry, but I don't yeah. know. Yeah. I, and, I, and, I I think if it comes down to Eno versus Lazard, I'm playing Eno though, because that that is the safest floor out of it because they play Seattle and he's the only running back there. Yeah, that's true. So well, you can I'm always playing... see what McLaurin gives you after the uh, Thursday game and then go from there if you need ceiling or or floor. Yeah, and if I if I wanted to be cute with it, I could bench Terry and then my pivot would be Juju if you know if Connor plays and I and I don't play Eno. Which yeah, I don't know if I'm I'm not jazzed get... about. I, w- I wouldn't yeah. get that cue. Yeah. It's an option. Yeah, it's a, I think if I, think I if I felt like Eno was gonna play, Juju's not the worst fallback. Yeah, if, yeah. I feel like McLaurin's gonna be your wide receiver spot, and then it's between Eno and Lazard. And I think if Eno plays, you probably end up playing Eno, but yep. that's a, that's all sorts of fun. Yeah. I'm 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 playing I'm playing Eno if James Conner's out though. Right. So all right, who's winning this matchup? Um, I'm taking Andy because I think James Conner is going to be out and there's not a great pivot that I like. Tight end situation for Fryer is awful. Yeah. Yeah, I James Conner is out. This one's going to be on with Andy regardless. Um, I'm going to go James with Robinson Andy. hasn't been – James Robinson hasn't been great these last couple of weeks either. So I think Fryer is going in the wrong direction right now. Yeah, I agree with that. Friars running backs are not looking great right now. Connor Hurt, Robinson trending downward. Hunt not vulturing as much and not really getting as many yards as you would hope. Um, so that hurts. Getting Adams and Harris out of his lineup this week also helps me quite a bit. So I'm going to go me. All right. You want to take us to uh, Colin versus Walker? Yeah, let me write down that we all picked me. Yeah, we're... <laughs> we've all picked straight down the line so far, all four matchups. Yeah. So you know what, yeah. Ty, you're not going to fall behind this week. Good work, bud. <laughs> not, not yet, man. You don't you don't know what I'm going to do here. Which one am I doing, Paul and Chris? No, Walker, Colin. Walker. All right, I got you. Pulling it up now. Right, Yahoo should really just know that we go off of mine, and they should put them all the same. <laughs> <laughs> I really think they're in the same order. It just bumps yours way to the top. So right. Yep. Um, okay. Taysom Hill or Kyle Pitts? Dun, dun, dun. <clears throat> Taysom Hill. I... T- Taysom Hill, until Kyle Pitts does something. I strongly disagree. If Pitts is playing, I'm playing him. Uh, against San Francisco? Yeah. Against anybody. It doesn't matter. If if Pitts is healthy, I'm playing him. Taysom Hill has played like 40 snaps across the five weeks. That's eight per game. The fact that he gets a touchdown every every game, you know, great for him. But come what on. Says he, what says he's not going to get more work after last week? What says that, maybe, that what, he's... maybe he's tired. <laughs> I don't know. I'm I'm banking on Taysom against the Cincinnati defense being a running back, quarterback, tight end combo over. I don't think he's a tight end. I just think he's tight end eligible. <laughs> uh, right. So he's a little bit of everything. And I'm going to go with that gadget over Kyle Pitts against San Francisco, though. I, I just – San Francisco has been shutting teams down on defense. And I maybe that actually helps Kyle Pitts because they got to dump the ball off quicker – I don't know, but I just don't trust Atlanta. I don't I don't know. I'm I'm running Taysom Hill and hoping for the best. Fair enough. So Kyle Pitts was on the injury report, I think, last week, two weeks ago, and they more or less said that it was nothing specific. He was just kind of sore from blocking too much. Yeah. Which I think is interesting. Like they kind of they they like have to put him as an inline blocker, which is really dumb. They should put any other tight end there and then put Pitts out as like a second wide receiver. They haven't figured that out yet. And until they do, I would play 
Taysom Hill because I think that there's at least a floor of like three or four points with Hill in this game versus Pitts, who could absolutely get skunks, like get like 10 yards and that's it. I mean, Taysom Hill could absolutely give you a goose egg too. I don't think that there's any floor to Taysom Hill. I, I mean, I, I assume that after, especially after last week, I think he's going to be a more consistent that's possible. Used player than they had been before. And even if he doesn't get a touchdown, I would expect 30 or 40 yards, which is more of a floor than what I would expect Pitts to. I mean, he's gotten one point in two different games um, and then two points in another game. So I would absolutely say that Hill's floor is higher. Well, then Kyle Pitts has a floor. All right. Mm-hmm. Move along. All right. Um, so you guys are going Taysom at tight end. Um, I don't think we're putting any of these running backs in Pollard, Henderson, or Ingram over Zeke and Gordon at this point. Um, and then, yeah, there's nobody else to talk about on Walker's team. So, do, we, at... do we play? Do you play Pollard at uh, in the flex over Lockett? I'm not benching Lockett after what he's been doing so far this year. Right. Hey, Geno's QB six. Geno's good, and he's not throwing to Metcalf very much. That's fair. It's all going to Lockett. Um, yeah, I I think it's a reasonable question, but I'm not benching Lockett until until he burns me. He's been pretty steady. Uh, he's got 40 targets, 32 catches, just had two touchdowns last week, which... I mean, That's all the, the touchdowns only, he's got. The only two touchdowns he has. But if you ignore week one, he's at 76 yards or more every week. And week one was a dud for everybody on that offense right so yeah, Lockett Lockett has double digit points two times this year Pollard has it three times this year so I do think that there's an argument I think against Philly that's probably a tough matchup and you keep blocking it against Arizona but I I, I thought that it was worth Pollard discussing. could be in more if they're losing is that true or am I making that up I don't know what the staff counts are, but Pollard is normally the catch it receiving back, so I would say probably, but because they're probably can, trailing in that game. I don't Zeke, know. Zeke I'm not overthinking it. Up. I'm keeping Lockett in. Yeah, for sure. All right. Collins side. Uh Russ questionable on Monday night versus QB six Geno Smith. I think <laughs> we're probably leaving QB six Geno Smith in at quarterback, which feels really fucking weird to say. Over Russell Wilson, yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah, play, play the new Seattle to. quarterback, not the old Seattle quarterback. <laughs> that guy wasn't any good. Apparently, <sighs> anybody can plug into that system and be good. Right. <laughs> um, and then Jacobs is on a bye, which hurts Colin this week. Uh, he's got McKissick in. But you're not playing James Cook over McKissick. <laughs> so there's that. Uh, uh is Jonathan Taylor coming back this week? No. Maybe. Colin uh, seems Coach really Frank fucked. Wright. Coach he's Frank Wright. Is I'm not optimistic, but he's optimistic Taylor will return. Yeah, he, he didn't, didn't practice, practice at all. Oh. Not good. Uh, Chris Olave's concussion also did not practice today. Colin's going to have to drop Derek Carr because you don't need three quarterbacks in any fantasy league unless it's a two quarterback league. This is almost as bad as Charlie. It's not as bad as Charlie. At least all three of Collins' quarterbacks are playing right now. Do, do you drop <laughs> Carr or do you drop Wilson? Either. You got to drop somebody to unfuck your starting lineup this week because unless you are unless you want to play David Njoku at your flex, move Waddle up to play for Olave and then still have no running backs, like you got to drop somebody. I mean, he could drop uh, Denver too, but really – you don't need three quarterbacks. So. Yep. I got Walker. Yeah, this one's he's, not going to be close. He's, he's got three quarterbacks, two tight ends, and two defense. Which explains why his wide yep. receivers and running backs are shit right now. Because yes. one guy got hurt, and now he's got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, on that note, I'm also taking Walker. Yeah, Walker. Walker for sure. Five for five. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> this this game should be close. At Might least. be. So, I don't know. 
Don't you put words in my mouth. I'm going to wait till you pick, Ty. I'm going to pick the same thing. Then it'll be on board to do something different. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. You should really pick against me, though. If, if history <laughs> has told us anything, it's not to agree with Tyler. All right. Uh, Kirk Cousins against Miami or Trevor Lawrence against Indianapolis? Give me Cousins. It's not a primetime game. He'll be fine. <laughs> that's it's a good reason actually yeah I'm, I'm good with cousins for that reason not not i mean miami's offense isn't going to do the defense any favors i don't know how well they'll move the ball so that could give make miami's defense tired give cousins more of a chance he's got plenty of weapons stick with cousins yeah. I'm, I'm sticking with cousins as well i just had to ask um i Michael Gallup, are you playing him or George Pickens? You're not starting him over Deontay Johnson, though, right? You can't. Or can can George Pickens or Gallup take over Deontay Johnson? I mean, that, that Tampa Bay matchup is rough, but I think you have to keep Deontay in. I just don't know. Deontay's getting the targets. To. He's getting the targets, so he's still – worthwhile yeah. but he's been bad this year so far i yeah. i said it all all along that i didn't like deontay this year but looking i mean having williams out on a bye hurts and i i mean i'm not putting the rookie pittsburgh receiver in over the veteran pittsburgh receiver in who's getting 10 targets a game like i don't i can't talk myself into that and then just looking at gallup versus yeah but if you deontay, look at the- if you look at the last three weeks, Pickens has had seven, eight, and eight. So it's not like he's not getting targeted. That's fair. And honestly, like that rookie connection, like, hey, you were the third wide receiver. I was the backup quarterback. We spent more time together than the starters who were with the starter. That's a thing. That that has been a thing before. So maybe I I'm with you, Ty, though, on what you said about Deontay getting the volume, like yeah, it's hard to put double digit targets on the bench. Yeah. Right. right. That. And that's and, and I like George Pickens. I and and that's been noted plenty of times. But and until he clearly takes a huge step with the target Pickett, that he's getting. Yeah. Yeah. Unless he takes a huge step with Pickett the next couple of weeks. I'm not starting him over Deontay Johnson yet. So uh Deion Deion Jackson could possibly go in if uh taylor no well and naheem hines has the concussion too but no probably i you get you need a lot to fall for that to happen so we'll see but probably not okay well i didn't think so but he got 13 carries last week put up nine fantasy points so i was curious yeah it's because the other two guys were out so if that happens again then we could talk about it but it's too early to know yeah yeah for sure all right that's about it over there um on this side, uh Swift is out, Mitchell's still on IR. Tyler Algiers got the Niners, you're not starting him, so you have to start Brian Robinson this week, right? Against Chicago. Um he had nine carries for 22 yards last week, but that whole team was awful. I um, would play Drake London over St. Robinson. Because he's Did you get... <laughs> <laughs> You've been waiting for that one, haven't you? I have. I've been waiting for that one all, I didn't, all I didn't year. I realize you were getting the dad joke of the of the week here. Uh, we'll talk about this matchup. So, so move Jeff Wilson up. Move Jeff Wilson. Jeff Wilson up. Put Drake London in. I think Atlanta's going to have to do something, and it's not like Brian Robinson did anything last week. You know, it's great that he's playing. It's great that he got touches. He Maybe got touches it Gibson? starts. Uh, I think he did. Yeah, Gibson only had like three or four carries. They both did shit. Yeah, though. both of them like, were bad. Yeah, and the Washington offense is is pretty not good. Um, so I'm I'm not jazzed about London's matchup, but. Atlanta's probably going to be losing. Atlanta's been scoring some points. Drake London's got like a 33% target share. So there's probably 50 yards in it for him. And I don't know that I could say the same about Robinson. That's fair. Yeah. I, 
I'm not opposed to it. I just I don't know that I trust Robinson and that Washington Commanders team yet. So yeah. Yeah, as bad uh, as the Bears' rush defense has been, if that whole offense for Washington is bad, then the Bears' defense can absolutely shut Robinson down. So, uh, are we dropping Rondale Moore then? I won't play Rondale Moore. Well, we're dropping him, right? Because Pat Fryermuth, we're not sure if he's playing, and he might need a tight end. Right. Oh yeah, probably. Yeah, that would make sense. Because he has a concussion and didn't practice again today. So I have a feeling he may be with this new concussion protocol situation not playing this week. Yeah, I th- a lot of teams I think are going to be a lot more cautious with what happened to Tua. So I think we'll see that kind of reverberate o- o- among the league. So I just figured that was that was a quick conversation <laughs> who we should drop. Um, so who's going to win this matchup? I'm picking first, right? Because that's what we just decided. Right, that's yeah. what we decided. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to take Chris. I was also going to take Chris. Boyer, it's down to you. If you uh, pick boy. Chris, we go six for six down the line this week. And then all of the picks we made are going to lose. I think that's Yeah, I got to go works. Chris because of, of Paul's running back situation. Like... Yeah, I think I'm going to go Chris because I like the Chase Diggs cook Dobbins side better. Well, and the problem is really the Everybody problem. else sucks for like each team otherwise. So it's like those four guys are what's going to make the bulk of their points. And I like Chris's four guys better. It My problem is Brian Robinson and Pat Fryermuth. Those two could right. both be who the hell knows. And the studs. So, yeah. So, I yeah, I don't really a... like the matchups on Paul's side this week. Like I, his players are okay, and like in a, a week where both of them are at full strength, it's a lot different conversation. But just looking at some of the matchups that Paul's got to deal with, it's not ideal. Yep. And this is a really important division matchup for these guys too. Right. So, all right. Well, uh, boy, you took Chris. I did. All right. So we're straight straight down the board. I can't make up any ground. <laughs> can't lose um, any ground is what you mean to say <laughs> right. if something yes. was going to happen it wasn't going to be Ty. making up ground uh, yeah we're just trying to give right. you a break this week <laughs> that's, that's fair I appreciate this it this is a bye week for matchup picks <laughs> uh, so. alright well on that I appreciate you guys uh, thanks for bearing with us uh, getting this podcast a little bit late this week Hey, Listen. We, we're, we're under time this week right yeah, I think so. Why you gotta joke? Do you want a long joke? Sure. Let's hit it. Sorry, right. guys. I won't exit yet until Andy's done. All right. So, Larry and his brother Jerry, best friends. Best friends. They did everything together. Everything. They played games. They played games. sports. Sports. Larry was always a little bit better than Jerry, though. Uh, and, you know, as they got a little bit older, you could start seeing some differences. Larry went off to college, became a dentist. Jerry stayed mostly stayed home, played a lot of video games, living with the folks. Uh, but, you know, two peas in a pod. Anytime they were together, best friends, hanging out, just living life. Now, Larry worked his way up through the dentistry field. Uh, to become the world-renowned five-time winner of the Brightest Smile Award, Dentist Larry. And Jerry didn't. He, uh, he you know, ate, ate Doritos, drank some Mountain Dew, and played a lot of COD. So what are you going to do? Different, different strokes. Um, but one day, something terrible happened. And, uh, and, and Jerry was in a horrible car accident and rushed was rushed to the hospital and guys it wasn't looking good but you know when these things happen death comes knocking and as it so happens death came knocking this time but unfortunately in matters like this with 
brothers that are as close as Larry and Jerry are. He knocked on the wrong door. He he showed up at Larry's house and Death knocked on the door and Larry puts down his you know his fourth brightest smile winner award that he was polishing goes and opens the door and sees death standing there now larry hadn't heard the news yet but death says oh, i'm sorry to break it to you um I, i'm i made a mistake but i'm actually uh I'm, I'm supposed to take your brother he's been in a horrible car accident and larry says well you know while i have you here is there anything i can do to uh you know to kind of make a wager make a make a bargain uh something you know don't take my brother and uh De death thinks and he goes well you know it, it's my fault for knocking on the wrong door so i suppose you do have that right and larry looks around he sees his five times brightest smile awards and he says all right well i challenge you much like the boy with the fiddle in this song uh, I challenge you to a toothbrushing contest. And, uh, well, the devil, he's hes pretty sly, he breaks out his golden toothbrush, summons a dirty-toothed fella, and he gives him one hell of a brushing. He brushes, he brushes, he brushes, gets his full three minutes in, as you're all supposed to do each night before bed and every morning. Now... After death was done with the dirty toothed man, those pearly whites were a sparkling. But Larry didn't get to the top of the dentistry field and win five awards for the brightest smile for nothing. So death conjures up a dirty tooth fella, much the same, and now it's Larry's turn. Larry goes to work, and boy, wouldn't you believe it. Larry turns out the brightest smile you've ever seen. Death just hangs his head and he says, Well, I suppose you win. You win this wager. You can have your brother back. I'll uh, I'll be seeing you later. And Death goes back to where he is, and Larry rushes down to the hospital to see Jerry and uh, finds him totally fine. Jerry says, brother, you know, I, I've had a weird day. I got hit by a car, and, uh, you know, it, it wasn't looking good, but then, you know, not a half an hour ago, uh, everything turned around, and, you know, I I've got a clean bill of health. And uh, Larry says, you know, I've had a weird day too. You could say I had a brush with death as well. <clears throat> See, and I thought that the punchline was going to be they're supposed to be brushing our teeth for three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Good work, Andy. Good Thanks. work. These are only fun for me, but that's all that matters. <laughs> <laughs> on that enjoy your football weekend <laughs> we'll be back at you next week with maybe a better joke nope. maybe some new segments and fuck i can't deal with that joke we're oh, out hey oh, wait sorry we're not you out. guys like the true or false put it put it in the things let us know we're, we're thinking about getting rid of it nobody's really said anything and that's fine i'm not sad if, if we get if it goes but put it in the right down there yeah you 60 some people that watch or yeah. you 12 people that watch 60 sometimes yeah, <laughs> probably that uh on that note i'm finally out turn this thing off and we're done for the week see ya <laughs>